Welcome back, everybody, to the Pac-16 All Team Builder Conference Dynasty. Let me set things up here real quick for you. Let me tee it up for you. Week 14 action, about to get underway. Santa Fe State, we just got to keep this in front of us here to have a chance at the conference championship game. Can't be doing things like that. First drive of the game, Wes Ricketts, our senior quarterback, throws another interception here. Honolulu College has a very, very good offense. Tyler Stratton, the quarterback, making some calls here. Running back, Romulus Suggs, getting some nice blocking out front. Got two guys to beat. He bounces off the first one, and he's gone. That'll be good for a 60-plus yard scamper. For Romulus Suggs, touchdown Islanders. They'll take an early 7-0 lead. And like I said, guys, we just got to find a way to get a W here. We've got two conference losses this season. Fresno A&D losing to OMI and the Northern Utah Golden Swarm. So those guys have also two conference losses. Albuquerque, the Arrows, and the LA Metro Dynamos, they've got one loss. So right now, if all things hold serve, those two teams would be in your conference championship game. But Santa Fe State, we do have an outside shot. We just got to find a way to win, and we need a little help. We need those two teams at the top to lose. We might be involved in some sort of tiebreaker. So that's kind of what's setting up here in this video, in this episode here tonight. 7 nothing game. Wes Ricketts saw his little inaccurate pass out there to Roy Calico. Looking for a touchdown. We will settle for the field goal. So 7-3 game. Tyler Stratton in the Heisman conversation. Maybe no longer. We already wrecked Texas Tech's quarterback and his chances for the Heisman. Maybe we'll wreck Tyler Stratton's chances here too. Tommy Cope with another INT. He's been really good this season at linebacker. Coming up with some big interceptions. So we got the football back here. Seven to three game. Third down and two. Ricketts throwing out to the left side. We might have had somebody open up the middle. But we were shooting for one of our better wide receivers. And that's going to go incomplete. Great play, by the way, from the cornerback for the Islanders. So we'll settle for the field goal yet again. Winthrop in the rain gonna bang it through right down the middle seven to six game Stratton gonna get hit hard by Gregory Bryant great job good pressure nice moves to get past the old lineman third down and four so we do get a couple yards given up on defense here to get him back into a third manageable situation almost picked off by the freshman corner Jack Gibb but he cannot come up with it Here's a first down from Jose Montero with a dive. That keeps the chains moving. That's the first catch for Montero. It's good for 11 yards there. So look what we got here. We got them all bunched up. Looks like it's man coverage all the way. They got a single high safety. They're going to bring a lot of pressure here on Ricketts. You got nobody in the backfield to protect them. So you know what? Let's uh, let's go ahead and do a little hot route here. A little corner route. J.D. Weeks burned him. Look at the perfectly timed throw from Wes Ricketts. Weeks has got the catch. He's in the end zone. That's a touchdown. Roadrunners taking the lead here. 12 to 7. We'll go ahead and kick that extra point up. Make it a six-point game. It's a little too early for me to go for two here. I don't really like that situation. Don't like that call. If you miss it, you go down five, and yeah, then you start to play a numbers game throughout the rest of the game. I just don't even want to get there. So we got a six-point lead here. 13 to 7. A minute 17 left here in the second quarter. And we got a risky throw up the middle. And, oh, what a toss by Tyler Stratton. It could have been picked off, but look, at it was a perfectly thrown football from the Mr. Heisman candidate here, Tyler Stratton. He's going to throw to the back of the end zone. That's a touchdown. McLean with the catch. And the Honolulu College Islanders will take the lead back. It is 14-13. Third down and nine situation here for the Roadrunners. We like this play call. We've got three receivers moving left, and Ricketts has got nobody to go to. You maybe could have swung it out there to the right as Brubaker looked like he was open for a little bit. So Winthrop's kick is up, and it is no good. He pushed it just a little bit to the right, and Honolulu College will hang on to a one-point lead. Let's go mid part of the third quarter, and this is going to be intercepted by Tyshawn Powers. He's come up with a couple interceptions this season. He's looking pretty good. Love it. That's a big turnover right there. That's now two picks for Tyler Stratton. So, hey, we get the ball. We're looking for a score here. We need a touchdown. Field goal, fine. Does the job. We go up by two 
We know their defense has been pretty aggressive on Wes Ricketts. He's not really had a ton of time to throw. Nice catch by Lee Brubaker. Good blocking out front by the offensive lineman on the screen. Here's a little draw play. J.E.G. Edwards George picking up the first down and more. That's what we want. We want to grind some clock off here in the second half. It's about 23 seconds left on the play clock. We're going to go again with another screen, and it's Edwards George setting up his blockers, but maybe he was just a little too fast for those guys. Actually ran right into the tacklers into the jaws of the defense there. First down and 10, and with a little, ooh, a little fake there. Nice move by J.E.G. Can't get to the goal line, but we will get to about the one-yard line here. Maybe the two, maybe the one and a half. Either way, it's a touchdown. Lee Brubaker is in there. And maybe do we go for two? I'm thinking about it. Let's see. Let's see if we decide to go for two. It, it's not a bad call here. 19 to 14, late in the game. We're going to do it. We're going to try to get to 21 to 14. A seven-point game. And you know, just what they're given there on the D-line, I think we might be able to run this thing in here rather than throw it. Again, they've got so much pressure on Ricketts throughout this game. you got to make a quick read and get in there. But, oh, we had a couple of lanes. And Brubaker is not going to convert. So it is now a five-point game. Wide open throw for Stratton. They're going to get to about the 11-yard line. Now second and five. Suggs is into the end zone. Really good drive by the Islanders. Suggs now got two touchdowns, two scores. And they're going to go for two. So in a one-point game, they're going to try to make this a field goal lead by getting the two-point conversion. So Stratton dropping back. He's got his man in the back of the end zone, but it's going to be picked off. Trying to get a good return out here. We know how pick sixes happen all the time. We would have turn, returned that thing back for a two-point conversion. We would have been taking the lead 21-20. to 20. Could have definitely turned the tide there. But a one-score game, all we need, a couple first downs, Thrown out to the right, almost caught, but it's going to be dropped. Now it's gut check time. Do we want to go for this? Fourth down and seven situation. We punt the football away. It could be game over. Ricketts, pressure on him. He's looking out for a receiver. Can't find anybody. Massimino puts the big hit on him, puts the pressure on him. And honestly, on replay, just trying to take a look and see who was open? We might have had the guy underneath, but, you know, on further review, I don't think anybody was open. It would have had been a really tight window throw. So second down and two. Suggs has got wide open lanes. He is gone. Touchdown Islanders. They go up by eight with the extra point. So we know what we have to do now. We got to get a touchdown. We got to get a two-point conversion. We have failed on one two-point attempt. And, guys, we have also failed on a couple field goals here in this game. So that's really what's cost us this game so far. Second down and five, 243 left to go. Here's a pass out deep to the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. Looking for DK Horn. And, man, Ricketts' deep ball is so inconsistent. Sometimes it's right on the money. Sometimes it's a little off. It's just not looking good right now. Third down and five. We have basically two down territory at this point. Got to go for it on fourth if you don't get it here. Another deep shot. Looked like DK Horn was open yet again. Going to miss him. Ricketts got to get this thing figured out, man. It's now fourth down and five. This is the game for Santa Fe State. Caught by DK Horn. First down. That's a way to get the job done. Second down and one. 214. Pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Montero. Touchdown, Roadrunners. Whew. We're down by two. We got to get a two-point conversion, guys. We can do this, right? We can do this. Maybe we pass it this time instead of running it. Maybe. We got five wide. Nobody back there to protect Ricketts. Who do we go to? Two-point conversion. Can we get it? No. Great play on defense by the Islanders, and they shut us down again on two-point conversions. Suggs, first down, and more. The more doesn't necessarily matter. It's the first down that matters. Santa Fe State will burn another timeout, and that is the end of the game. They will just kneel it out. And guys, I just look back. We missed two field goals, one that I didn't show, one that I did. We missed two field goals, so that's six points left on the board. 
We missed two two-point conversions. So if, you, if you've got the field goals in the bag, if you make those, then maybe you don't have to go for two in those situations. So let's just split the middle here. We'll just say that we missed two extra points, right? So all in all, that's two field goals, six points combined, and two extra points off the touchdowns. That's eight points right there. That's the difference in the game. Uh, yeah, not good, man. Not good. So Santa Fe State officially, I mean, even if we won, we again, we still had to have had help at the very top. Albuquerque would have needed to lose. LA Metro would need to lose to Bellingham State here today. And then from that point, tiebreakers would have to come in into play. And maybe Santa Fe State, despite a win, they would have been toast anyway. I'm not real sure how the tiebreakers would have worked out. But it was a good season. Good season for Santa Fe State. We're like a 72 overall team. And the fact that we were hanging in with the big boys and the big guns, LSU, right? The very first game of our season. Went to Death Valley. Took them on head to head. We hung in there as long as we could. Beat Texas Tech on the road. That was a tough one. They were a top 10 team. Played our conference schedule really well, right? So we're right there. Like, we're, we're actually a pretty darn good team. I'm just a little nervous about quarterback going into the offseason. But I do like our offense. I do like some players on our defensive side. So I'm excited about the prospects of this Santa Fe State Roadrunners team going into season number two and in the future and, and more. But Honolulu College, man, so I think that they're still going to be a very good team. They finish the year with a 8-4 and four record, just the same as us. But they scored 470 points. Like, they're one of the best offenses in the Pac-16 conference. And there you saw an updated look at the schedule. So, really, with Santa Fe State's loss out of the way, they, really, that story is over. That book is closed. It's really coming down now to this game here. Multnomah State against Albuquerque. Two teams, of course. Multnomah State, they're done. They're out of the picture. Albuquerque's just got to get a win here. And honestly, against the backup quarterback for Multnomah State, after that touchdown, up 7-0, third down and eight situation, Oren Sparks apparently is hurt. He's got a little wear and tear going on, and he didn't want to play the last game of the year. Like, it doesn't make any sense for that program to, to do that. So they're going to go with the backup quarterback, Fernando Bourgeois, and those arrows. They know what's at stake here. They got to keep the pressure on, put the pedal to the metal, Got a touchdown here for Garcia, right, through the running game. You got Ortiz with a passing game. 14 to nothing game at the end of the first quarter, guys. Jair Ortiz, the junior, with the score. So we're going to start the second quarter. That's a big hit put on. A big sack right there. Bones takes him down. He's rattling the bones there of the backup quarterback. Third down and eight. Brad Hunt taking the carry, and he's not going to get the first down. So Multnomah State, two possessions. They cannot get a score to respond to the arrows here. A little stretch play. Look at Garcia. Look at the speed, man. We see it every single week with Alejandro Garcia. This guy is just going to be something special. Freshman running back, scoring a bunch of touchdowns, being a big part of this offense here for the arrows. 21 to nothing game. Third down and two situation for the Orcas. Little play action, and it's somehow tipped and caught. And, uh, oh, we're, we're being selfless here. 23-yard <laughs> pick six. They're going to give the touchdown here to Spears. But he did end up flipping it to his teammate out here for the touchdown. Look at this. Little flip. Whoop. So they must have been talking on the sidelines. Hey, hey, man, my girlfriend's in there. My girlfriend's in the crowd. I, I just I haven't come up with a pick all year long. Like, I need one. Can you give me something here? Can you help out? Can you help the brother out? There you go. So, but I got to impress her. He didn't have to do anything. He just had to be in the right place, right time. Another interception here. Backup quarterback for Multnomah State is not doing so hot. Third down and long here for the Arrows. Bourgeois with the speed. He's got a touchdown. And guys, I think this game is over, don't you? Yeah, it's time to, time to go to sleep. Time to put the... Put this game to rest, 35 to nothing, and it's not even the second quarter yet. So we do jump to late in the fourth quarter, 42 to nothing. And that, my friends, is pick number five for Spears. Five interceptions for Spears. Now, to Dalton's credit, 
he did go in and do a little super sim because this game was over. Wanted to kind of get in and get out. There wasn't really any any point in, to keep playing. I mean, it was kind of a mercy rule situation. Five interceptions for Spears. That's got to be like a record. That has to be a record or something. <laughs> Five picks, and he gave one up. He gave up a pick six to his, to his teammate. Crazy, crazy game. So Albuquerque has clinched. They are in the conference championship game, and honestly, I'm not really surprised. This was kind of my preseason prediction, guys. I predicted that Albuquerque was going to get there. I did not see that Fresno A&D was going to get there. I must have misunderestimated Keneal's game, honestly. So you look at the turnovers there, they had seven. Seven turnovers. And this is why I've talked to the guys and I've said, you know what, I think we might need to move to Heisman. And I don't know if we need to like lower the sliders on Heisman so the, the BS kind of goes away, right? This is Deuce Cook, by the way. Freshman, he's a custom, he's a custom quarterback. So it was not a good day for Deuce Cook. And I think I've seen Deuce in the live chat before, so I'm sure that he's going to be a little disappointed in the performance here tonight. But just know you're going to get better. You're going to get better. And if you've won channel points, guys, you can use those to upgrade your players in the offseason here coming up. So if you need your guys to get a little bit better, use that progression factor a little bit quicker, channel points are a perfect way to do that. So more on that later when we get into the offseason i'll explain how that all works but if you want to dm me or you want to leave a comment here on the video asking just how the channel point system works upgrade system works please let me know channel points is a huge part of the channel and i want to get you guys involved as much as i can so kind of just going back to albuquerque just depending on who that they play it could be la metro and they lost to la metro earlier in the season Fresno a and D these two teams haven't played so we got a little user versus user potential matchup here with Keneal and Dalton so two community members that uh, have been here for a long long time so I'm excited to uh, see how this is all gonna play out it's really gonna come down to Bellingham State tonight against LA Metro if Bellingham State can somehow get an upset on LA Metro remember Malik Hayes, the running back, Case Keltson, the quarterback for Bellingham State. Muddy Puffins have played really, really well as of late. They're starting to get a feel down for the difficulty and the sliders. And kind of going back to that discussion, I'm just not sure what we're going to decide on and how we want to handle this because I'm personally kind of tired of all the interceptions. I think it's kind of, I just think it's crazy. It's just not football. Um, <laughs> There it is. Shante Spears. Five picks, guys. Five picks. For a 78 overall senior cornerback. Okay? That's like that, that's a problem. Five interceptions. And it's not not so much for the user. It's just that the CPU quarterback does a lot of stupid things sometimes. And I just don't feel like it's a representation of, of football. And it's not good for our series. You know, the CPU quarterback's just giving you extra opportunities to beat them. And normally on all American difficulty, you should be beating the CPU more times than not, right? So I think maybe we consider going to Heisman, maybe we tone down the slider so that it's not all this wacky. Heisman's goofy too sometimes, especially for the CPU. It, all American favors the user big time, Heisman favors the CPU big time. So there's gotta be some sort of balance here. And if you guys have any sliders, please let me know. Please let me know which one to check out. But let's dive in here to the LA Metro and Bellingham State game. We got Evers taking this back it's a 37 yard pick six so just now talking about it's a great segue just talking about pick sixes and how the cpu quarterbacks do goofy things well the mighty puffins have found a way to go up seven to zippo here and a little misdirection friday mutton nice catch right there not good run and rocky atkins finding his playmaking running back out here good catch nice catch out there to the left side that's isaiah warwick their star wide receiver second down and goal here's friday mutton into the end zone. That's a game-tying score. We are 7 all here. Next possession here for the Mighty Puffins. Little play action. Second down and three. Oh, intercepted. Case Kelton tossing it up, giving it up. And honestly, when you look back at that, I knew what he was trying to do, but it was a very, very, very tight window throw. Very risky throw, and it did not pay off. 
Muddy Puffin's defense shuts down the Dynamos there. A little wide receiver screen cannot convert. Next possession here for the Muddy Puffins is a touchdown, a deep bomb to Andre Cross. You know what's funny about Case Kelson, Tom, the user behind the Muddy Puffins here, he has said in Discord how much he hates Case Kelson. Like, he can't wait for him to graduate, he can't wait for him to leave and get his freshman quarterback to start. But, you know, honestly, he's been pretty good in this little hot streak for the Muddy Puffins. However, we got LA Metro getting another response touchdown. Atkins fired up the middle, perfectly run route, perfectly thrown football. There was nobody going to catch wide receiver there for the Dynamos. So 14-14 game, and I've told Tom, don't simulate past, don't go past the freaking celebrations, man. We need that. We need it. It's good for closure. Second down and seven. Nice play there. Look at the creativity by this Bellingham State offense. I just love watching them play. I do. They got they got jet sweeps. They got Wildcat in here. They got Malik Hayes running routes. I don't really know about the Heisman pose. Maybe he feels like he should be included in that as one of the nation's top leading rushers. Muddy Puffins up 21 to 14. Here's a pass complete. No. It'll be dropped. They'll have to settle for a field goal here, 21 to 14. Dynamo's looking to just inch a little bit closer to that lead for the Muddy Puffins. They will pick it up and good as right down the middle. We got ourselves a 21-17 football game here heading to the second half. Third down and 12, Keltson rolling out. Pressure put on him by the freshman linebacker, Nelson Bullock. And interestingly enough, in a fourth and 12, they're going for this thing. And you know what? Honestly, I don't really blame them. If they don't get it, LA Metro starts their next drive here with about 10 seconds left just behind the 50-yard line. So I don't really blame them. Fourth and 12. They're going to take a shot, actually. They're not even looking for the first down. They want the touchdown. Mighty Puffins convert. Fourth and 12. Andre Cross with the big, big touchdown. That definitely paid off. Now you've got an 11-point lead going into the second half. Trying to play spoiler. I thought that Case Keltson was hated on the message boards for Bellingham State. Social media is constantly complaining about this guy, but he's got 241 yards and three touchdowns against the conference leader here. The Dynamos, only one loss in conference play. Third down and four. Look at this again. We got another Andre Cross sighting. <laughs> this guy's absolutely killing it. He's burning his matchup right now. 28-17 game. First down and goal at the two. Little fake jet. We've got Malik Hayes into the end zone. Another touchdown. This guy is killing it out the ground, man. We'll, we'll also take a look at the end of season statistics, by the way. So you guys get a feel of who's done what and who's on the verge of being a big-time player here next season. Isaiah Warwick getting a response touchdown, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, guys. Warwick is looking to the Bellingham State fans and pointing them out, pointing them out. You said you, you were talking crap? You were talking crap? Come on the field. Guard me. It's like, okay, well, relax, man. It's, it's about a minute 55 left, guys. It's still an 11-point game. Muddy Puffins running this clock down. LA Metro uses a timeout. They got one left. Muddy Puffins, all they need is a first down, and they will pick it up. It's official. It's over. This game is done. Muddy Puffins will play spoiler. They've got the upset. Your conference championship matchup will be Keneal with Fresno A&D, the artists, Little magical run as a 74 overall team, little cupcake team with some really good freshmen against the Albuquerque Arrows with Dalton. That's your matchup, guys. So we can all thank Tom, the other user, for beating LA Metro. It's kind of a disappointing season, honestly, for the Dynamos. This was a team that was touted as being the team to beat. And for the most part, all season long, I mean, they had one loss in conference and they get knocked out by a user. Their two losses came against users. Look at that. So this is one that we didn't even get to see was Fresno A&D putting up 70 points on them. That sucked, man. That really sucked that I could not get the gameplay for you guys. Um, you know, I, I'm really dependent on the guys 
to get me their gameplay because I can't watch it. I can't see it. So, really wish we would have gotten that to you. But Fresno AD upset LA Metro. That's what got them in that little bit of a tailspin, that, that situation, right? If they had just beaten Fresno A&D, they wouldn't have even had to worry about this about this game and a loss. So that's your situation, man. So that's your matchup. Albuquerque Arrows against the Fresno A&D artists. And again, I expected the Arrows to get there. I did not expect the artists to get there in Season 1, but here we are. So for Bellingham State, Kelson ends his season as on that on that hot streak, man. He's he's what led this Mighty Puffins team along with Malik Hayes. You can't leave that guy out. I know that uh, they really wanted to start running the football a lot more, start utilizing Malik Hayes in that ground game and getting creative with some of their play calling there. They had a really good season, really good season. It started off a little rocky, but they took care of business later on in the year and. Uh, Really got a good feel for the players that made up their roster and understood what they were trying to do, what they were trying to accomplish. So Case Kelson should be coming back for next season as a 90-plus overall quarterback. He should. Rocky Atkins definitely will be back as a sophomore. So I look at LA Metro. You know, their running game might be a cause of concern. Friday Mutton is a senior. He's going to be going to the NFL draft as a 94-plus overall player. You got Warwick will be back. Maybe, potentially. I know that these guys like to take take their chances as underclassmen. Well, he's an upperclassman, but you know what I mean. Um, as juniors, not seniors, right? They got one more year eligibility, and a lot of those guys would just end up going to the pros anyway. If you're good enough, you want to get out there as fast as you possibly can. But they also got Jervis Vero Jr., a sophomore there, is 87. So, you know, they, they're not in too bad of a spot. So if you're LA Metro, like you've still got a bunch of players here. It's a pipeline. You know, they've got that California pipeline to uh, work with. So they're not going to be a team that goes down lightly. You know, they'll, they'll take this loss. They'll take this season on the chin and they'll get back to the drawing board. So for Northern Utah, you know, they have nothing really to gain here as far as conference standings go. They're just trying to shoot for becoming bowl eligible. So you got to lay it out all on the field here. It's nothing to three. Three to nothing. Washington State with the lead here late third quarter, and that is an incredible catch. Nice job right there. The concentration, able to ward off the defender's hands right there. Beautiful job. Third down and goal. Pass going to be incomplete. Shooting for Tony Newman out there is Novak. Fourth down and goal. And in a defensive slugfest, they're going to actually go in the Wildcat. Interesting play call here for the Golden Swarm. They're going to hand it off. Oh, man, a touchdown. Golden Swarm take the lead. 6-3. to three. What a game. What a game. 7-3 to three with the extra point. Second down and four. Fourth quarter and a fumble. We got a little scrum at the bottom of the pile. And Golden Swarm will take over. They'll recover it. Wazoo, the Cougars, they can't believe it. They might lose to Northern Utah. Golden Swarm here. Third down and goal. Down at the one-yard line. Novak, 13 of 21 so far this game. And, you know, he's been mildly efficient. He's been all right. Hasn't turned the ball over. That's something to note here. Onyakachi will get the touchdown, so the Golden Swarm will expand their lead here. 14 to 3. Washington State. Oh, an interception. Cannot throw that football. Cannot throw that football. A little too risky. Down by 11, you need scores. And that should probably do it. Dre Wheaton, the linebacker, with the interception. Still fourth quarter. Off the INT. That's a touchdown. Jarquavius Hammer with the score. And this game is over. Northern Utah is bowl eligible. That's really what they were playing this game for, guys. They needed to get to six wins. Although they might be on the bubble. Like, that's the thing. You needed to take care of business. They did that. They got to six wins on the season. So we will find out in the offseason, a little bit later here, after the conference championship game is done on Thursday, we'll find out if they did enough in the eyes of the committee to get selected for a bowl, a bowl game. Now, one thing, 
Uh, it's a little weird. You guys will see it here at the very near, near the end of the video here coming up. The bowl projections. I don't know where our teams are. They just for whatever reason they don't they don't say that our teams are bowl eligible. Like we're not even <laughs> the logos, the names, we're not even up there. So I think it's a little weird, but yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll show you that in a minute, guys. But as you guys can see here, we didn't do the whole entire game because obviously it's just a very defensive battle out here. But the thing for Novak is they won this game probably due to the fact that he did not throw an interception. I really look at that and I think, you know, again, it just gets down to the, the basics. Throw interceptions, you're more likely to lose the game. Don't throw interceptions, and you're more likely, likely to win the game. So, Northern Utah, they're learning. <laughs> we'll see if they take the next step here next year. But across the league here, across the conference, Week 14, Liberty will get a win over Sedona State. And you guys saw the, the other games here. 41-37 to 37 victory for Colorado a and They are unfortunately not going to be bowl eligible. It would be a stretch if somehow that they made it here at 5-7. and seven. But they do get a victory over Vegas State. Each team had an interception given up. Elijah Spears did throw for five touchdowns and gave up one pick. Cruz McAllister was a beast with three touchdowns. Kinsey with two, over 100 some odd yards. Weatherholt was awesome as well. Again, he's been having, he's been good all year long. He's had a couple games towards the beginning of the year that were a little sketchy, but ever since then, he's really turned it on. Been a really good quarterback. One of the leaders here in the Pac-16. Sedona State will fall to Liberty. Four touchdowns for Trip Ferris. He's been the guy. Like, there's no question about it. They needed to make that change. Frankie Beavers, no longer the QB there. Trip Ferris, the young guy, four touchdowns, 444, and a loss. So that defense for Sedona State got to get a little bit better. So your conference championship game, as I've mentioned, 11-1 Albuquerque against 9-3 Fresno A&D. So it does all come down to conference wins and losses, guys. And Fresno A&D got the tiebreaker here at seven wins and two losses against LA Metro. UMR and Anchorage rounding out the bottom of the Pac-16 standings. Albuquerque currently listed as a playoff hopeful as the 12 seed. So if they get a win here, become conference champs, they will make it. No Pac-16 representation in the Heisman race any longer. So Tyler Stratton's performance this season was apparently not enough to crack the top five. So you can thank Santa Fe State for that. And like I said, guys, for bowl projections, I just don't see our, our teams here. I, I know we've replaced some teams, but quite honestly, be quite honest with you, I don't remember who they were. Um, I believe one of them was Texas State. So maybe it's a glitch. Maybe Texas State is in fact one of us, one of our teams. And I just don't remember uh, that we replaced Texas State. Um, and, and other teams like Old Dominion's in there too. Maybe they were replaced. I just I couldn't tell you. So I will talk real quick about end of season statistics. And we might as well just focus on one team at a time. And I know that it's just, it's just a lot. And some people just really aren't interested in end of season stats. And that's okay. Um, it's not for everybody. But we're going to only look at one team here, Santa Fe State. And then I'm going to jump to conference Le uh, leaders so we're going to look across the entire conference to see who are our passing leaders who are our rushing leaders things like that but um, running backs Lee Brubaker and Jaden Edwards George for Santa Fe State they had some good seasons with the kind of the dual back timeshare there JD Weeks over a thousand yards had a bunch of touchdowns so he had a great year Gregory Bryan 25 TFLs with 17 and a half sacks as a freshman so yeah, he's definitely one of the NCAA leaders in those categories. He's had an amazing season. We had a lot of interceptions this season. Good numbers there. Tommy Cope, of course, that's no surprise here with four picks. Granger with four as well. He's a custom guy. Delaney Wright with two. He had himself a good year as well. A great year by Santa Fe State's defense. Wes Ricketts, he's gone. He's a senior. 30 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. It's a good two to one ratio there. I'm I'm okay with it, but I really would have liked, I think anybody would have liked the numbers from their quarterback like Jordan Weatherholt. Yeah, single digits in picks, that would have been nice. Uh, maybe Tyler Stratton's numbers, 50 touchdowns. Or in Sparks numbers, I would have even taken that, 26 and six, so I would have liked that. Elijah Spears had a good year too. Chris Christmas was awful. James Novak had actually more touchdowns than picks, but he was, the leader in that category 
with 27 interceptions. It's so many picks, man. So he's Teaspoon's got to cut down on the picks, and we've talked about that at nauseum. If he does that, I think the Golden Swarm will be a lot better. You can see that when we sort it up. Novak, 33 and 27. But you look at Chris Christmas, man. 52% completion percentage, and he didn't even break double digits in touchdowns. So that's awful. But Malik Hayes, Friday Mutton, Calypso Berryhill, Fodios Marinos, Nadim Onyakachi, Lee Brubaker, Cooper McTavish, Brad Hunt, Herman Granger, Jaden Parker, Karan Berry. All those guys leading the way across the conference in rushing yards. And of course, no, to nobody's surprise, you had Hendricks in there. You had Bourgeois in there. Two quarterbacks. He's one of the rushing leaders. Now Malik Hayes, touchdown leader. Tied, actually, with Friday Mutton, both with 18. Parker had 11. Edwards George had 10. It's kind of interesting, though, because Jaden Edwards George is more of the speed back. Lee Brubaker would have been the guy that would have more touchdowns at the goal line, but we actually opted to use JEG more towards that goal line. Use him on tosses and stretches and read options there. So he was pretty effective there at 10 touchdowns on the season. Don't know how many he had at the goal line, but either way, guys, um, good numbers there for Santa Fe State's offense. Now, Cordova McGarry leading the Pac-16 in receiving yards, 1,500. J.D. Weeks second as a freshman there with 1,100, and he had those nine touchdowns. That was probably good for probably upper, upper tier for J.D. Weeks with nine scores, but Isaiah Warwick had nine. He had nine from Lucius Tapper. 10 for Ortiz. So maybe he was kind of more middle of the pack, actually, when you start looking at the other production here from, from these other receivers here. He had a couple custom players, Pitbull, Pickles, King, Corsair, Moses Waters the third. So I'm just kind of scanning through here at some of these custom guys. But when we sort, yeah, Weeks isn't even on the list. But McGarry, 16, McLean, 15. Look at, look at the, <laughs> we've had back-to-back. -back. Honolulu College, McGarry and Lane, Fresno A&D, Billico and Brooks. Yeah, I mean, and then uh, Lassiter there and Kinsey and Sash. So you can tell like which offenses were really good, right? Albuquerque, Honolulu College, Fresno A&D, LA Metro. Those are the big offenses here this season in the Pac-16. Now defensively, we didn't really see a lot of box scores for defensive players, to be honest, like a tackle's a tackle. Like I don't really, when I, when I look at box scores and I kind of show you guys these statistics at the end of each game, I don't know how much it tells you, you know, like, oh, this guy had seven tackles. Well, I don't really know what that means. Was it, you know, how many of those tackles were behind the line of scrimmage? You know, how many TFLs did he have? How many sacks did he have? Like those are good numbers to look at, but I don't really like dive in too much. But Gregory Bryan was the leader in the Pac-16 for TFLs and sacks, which is awesome to see as a freshman. So he's only going to continue to grow in that in that light. Eric Massimino with 12 TFLs, and he was a really good player. Now for interceptions, Spears had five in one game, so he was down towards three, <laughs> and he jumped himself all the way up to second. But you look at look at how many interceptions that Albuquerque got this season. So many guys with with interceptions there. LA Metro had a couple guys, I think. Um, you know, Fresno A&D with Case Hernandez and all those dudes. So good, good uh, defensive performances from from our Pac-16 team builder players. Now, looking at the national ranking, quarterbacks. Tyler Stratton was one of your leaders. Actually, he was in fact the leader with touchdown passes, and it's crazy. The leader in touchdown throws not even cracking the top five in the Heisman list. So maybe he was snubbed a little bit. And honestly, with the two picks that he gave up against Santa Fe State, I wouldn't have really hit him hard on that. He had, what, seven, six interceptions all year long? That's kind of harsh a little bit. Ricketts right up there in the tier of the, uh, the most interceptions on, on the uh, in the league in the NCAA. So I got to work on that a little bit more. Of course, uh, Gordon, leader in rushing, but Malik Hayes, Friday Mutton were up in that tier as well as an elite running back. They led the way in touchdowns. 
We had McGarry leading the nation in receiving yards. J.D. Weeks, Brooks, Kinsey. A lot of those guys doing well with receiving yards. Now, touchdowns. We had 19 from Campbell. That's crazy. Gary's got the 16. McLean with 15. So you, you can see just how proficient and electric that that offense was for the Honolulu College Islanders. So, guys, that is it for the video here. Unfortunately, I, I think it's a little bugged because you would have expected with Bass as 18 sacks, you would have thought that we would have seen Gregory Bryan up there, right? But he would—he he wasn't even up there. TFLs as well, he wasn't even up there. So it's a little glitched, not including every player on this list. So defensively, I, I'm not sure what's going on here with the game, but that's okay. Next time I see you guys on Thursday night will be the conference championship game. It will be Albuquerque against Fresno a and &E. Two users squaring off, and it is a battle of ages, honestly. This is, uh, this, <laughs> this is going to be fun, man. Keneal's been close to me as a community member. Dalton's been close to me as a community member. So I think it's cool that they get to square off in our inaugural season of the Pac-16 All-Team Builder Conference, squaring off against each other here for all the marbles. Two proficient offenses, two really electric offenses. Can't wait to watch it. Can't wait to bring it to you guys. I'll see you in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support on the series. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.